Welcome, it's Dinome. In this video, I will show you exactly what is crypto.com business model and how they make money. Because it was clear to me after making a few videos about crypto.com and their team and all the background stuff and how sustainable they are through AMAs that you guys still had a lot of questions. And mainly you guys wanted to know how do they exactly make money and what is their finances? How can they be profitable? So for this video, I found everything I could about them from the internet but uh, they say that they do not publish any earnings and they do not publish a balance sheet because they think themselves as Amazon in their early days uh, who didn't provide any detailed breakdowns of their balance sheet because Amazon they were able to work without competition for seven years and build their business basically in secret and then they became this massive giant and they look up to Amazon in this regard that's why they don't want to publish this information. So I'm actually doing a disservice making this video and uh, revealing their secrets. But uh, anybody who is doing research were able to find the same things. I just may combine it into this short video. So I hope you appreciate this. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel as well. But let's just get started. So first, what is exactly their business? So their vision is to bring cryptocurrency to every wallet, right? And uh, to do that, I found that they are doing actually six different business uh, ventures. So the first is token sales of M0 and Zero. They have the mobile app where you can buy and sell crypto. Uh, then they have the Visa card. Then they have the exchange. Then they have the borrow lend platform with the crypto credit and the crypto earn. And then they have the merchant or the crypto pay service as well. And any one of these areas could be a business on their own. And you can you know crypto exchanges make a lot of money in 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 currently already. So if they only had the exchange, it would be massively profitable already. But they combine all of this together to get the economics of scale, which basically means that if they have a customer and they get money squeezed out of them through all these different places, then uh, they can have lower margins, which is good for the customer as well, and everything is easily accept easily ready in one place as well but also it means that uh, some of these areas may be profitable and some of these areas may be unprofitable and uh, I think a lot of these are currently unprofitable as well but let's just take a look at token sales first because I think this is the most important thing and uh, this is the most interesting part as well so let's take a look at MCO first it's a little bit more boring the more important part is when we get to CRO actually but uh, I think this is important as well because it was their first coin. And uh, according to their white paper, it is used for the Visa cards. So you can get the, uh, the annual return on it, the cashbacks and other perks. You can use it for crypto invest, crypto credit and crypto earn. So you get better rates if you hold MCO. And they, their plan was also to use MCO as their driver for the crypto.com app. But actually, if you look at reality, this is more mostly funded with the CRO actually. So this use case was actually put into CRO, I think. So four out of five plans for MCO have been implemented. And if we take a look at the stats, you can see the initial coin offering was 2017 and they raised 26.7 million in capital. So this was a good boost for their business in the early days. So they get a head start and the total supply of MCO is 31 million and the uh, circulating supplies exactly 50% of that so this circulating supply is actually lower than Bitcoin actually and you can use it for cards taking cashback perks and bonus interest they were all also giving out zero airdrops 2019 but it was then taken out and uh, some concerns that people had with MCO is mostly recently that I saw is that why the price hasn't gone up and I was uh, looking into it and I found that that mostly it's people who have been affected by the uh, pandemic situation and they have been having to sell the MCO. Because when you stake the MCO on your card, you have to stake it for six months and then you can take out the MCO uh, afterwards. So I think a lot of people have actually sold the MCO from that. And then we had the Wirecard news, which is the latest news which affected crypto.com because uh, Wirecard basically made a $2 billion fraud and because it's an issuer for the crypto.com cards, people were afraid that it will affect their funds. But actually crypto.com customers were not affected by this news at all. So the customer funds are protected. But I believe it will have a slowdown of the issuing of new cards. 
So they have to find a new partner for the for the crypto.com cards who will issue the cards. Uh, I'm sure it is their main priority right now. So it's just going to be a small hiccup. And then the marketing focus has been on CRO for the last six months. So uh, I think that's a big reason why there's a lot of disappointment for MCO. And the price of CRO has gone up and the price of MCO has been going steady. So it just creates more disappointment. So people are selling their MCO and not buying MCO at these current prices. But I think MCO is massively undervalued currently. That's why I've been stacking up MCO myself. And whenever there's disappointment, people are just selling because of the feeling of disappointment. So I think this is a good time to buy, at least in my opinion. And uh, other concerns people had is how they store MCO and what is the tokenomics of MCO. So I'll cover these next. So how do they store MCO? You can actually go to etherscan.io and search for MCO token. And then you can go to uh, see who are the uh, biggest token holders. So as you can see, this address here holds the 50% of the supply. And this uh, supply is actually never supposed to be used. It is there to secure the customer funds uh, if anything bad would ever happen. So they have it as a backup. So it's basically locked in forever, at least for now. So it's exactly 50%. But then you have these other addresses here as well. You can see Binance here has two addresses that hold a big amount of MCO. Bitrex and Huobi, uh, which are also exchanges, have a big amount of MCO as well. But then you have these different addresses here. So let's take a look at what they have. So if you take a look at this address here, uh, the last time it was used was 393 days ago and it holds 4.7 million MCO. So I think this is a cold wallet for MCO or the crypto.com as well. So they hold these assets as a insurance as well. Then there's this address which has 1.7 million MCO. It has been used 662 days ago the last time. So I think this is another cold wallet as well. So I think crypto.com has a little over 5 million. Uh, no, a little over 6 million in their cold wallets. That's what I, I, I think. And then there's this address. And as you can see here, it has a lot more activity in the recent days. So I think this is their hot wallet. So this wallet is used for the customer wallets. That's what I, what I believe. Because if you look at this, the growth of this wallet has gone up. But now people have been selling from this wallet. Uh, that's what I, what I think. But it could be a staking wallet as well. But I think it's the, the, the wallet where they hold customer funds. Could be staking, could be uh, for the casual funds. But as you can see, there's a few big drops here. But uh, that's what I think it's used for. And then there's these addresses here as well, which are big holders. And if you take a look at this, you can see that the, uh, the chart here, this one has been steadily accruing interest and it has uh, gained more MCO during these times. Then there's this address, which uh, is doing pretty much the same. And then there's this address and then there's this weird one. And these, uh, you can see this one was released June 2020. So this is only like a week or two old address and it already has 488,000 MCO. And I don't know what it is used for. And this address here is actually used for Binance, uh, moving MCO between Binance and uh, and crypto.com. This address, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the founder address and then they will give it away later on. I'm not exactly sure what this is for. But we can see that they are not using these funds. And this one could be a big holder because it has been selling a little bit. But it's not receiving interest according to this charge because the movements are very uh, like spiky. So I don't know exactly what this is used for, but it's not used for staking, I could say that, based on these movements. And then we can take a look at the crypto.com MCO addresses. So the total number of MCO addresses is a little over 120,000. And it's steadily growing and it has grown faster during these last few months. But when they say that they have 2 million users, only 120,000 and a little over have an MCO address in the Ethereum Ethereum blockchain. So that's a thing to note as well. And uh, if you look at active addresses, any given day, uh, as of now, they only about 466 
active addresses of MCO. And it has been growing since the cards have been released. So I'm expecting this to be growing steadily also in the future. But this number is very, very low in my opinion. I don't know why it's that low. It made me question the legitimacy of this information as well. Because the number is, seems way too low in my opinion. But uh, it could be true. But only 466 active addresses per day is still low in my, my opinion. A lot of room to grow as well. And then we can take a look at the top 1% of addresses, how much MCO they hold of the total supply. And you can see that the top 1% is actually selling off their holdings or the holdings have been withdrawn from those addresses. And then we can take a look at the balance on exchanges. So we can t see that the balance on exchanges has actually been growing. So exchanges have been uh, stacking on MCO lately. So the tokenomics of MCO is that whenever they give MCO as a perk, Crypto.com actually has to buy it back from the market. So this is a cost for uh, Crypto.com, in, in my opinion, I believe so. Because there's no more MCO added in the system. So only way to get the MCO back is by buying it. So when they give it out as a staking reward or as a perk or cashback, they have to buy it back using their money. But then let's take a look at zero because this is the most interesting part. And when I show you this, then you will be like, ah, oh, okay, now I get it. So zero actually had no ICO and the total supply is 100 billion, but the circulating supply is only 17.7%. So that means that 82.3% of the total supply has not been released yet. And uh, you can use it for staking for the syndicates and if you want to make the maximum amount of profit with Ciro, you can use the min-max strategy to get 30 to 40% interest per year on your Ciro. And I've made videos about this uh, before. So if you want to use this strategy with Ciro, I highly suggest you watch my previous videos on that. But Ciro, Ciro can also be used as a mer in the merchant gateway to buy things on the crypto.com pay. And they will have their own chain in the future as well. And... Uh, if you go to their white paper, uh, you can see the use case for CRO, but they actually announced after their white paper that they will freeze some of these assets. So 40% uh, of these assets, the long-term incentive wallet and the reserve wallet will be frozen for three years until the end of 2022. So 40% will be frozen until then and 20%, which is the ecosystem grants, will be frozen until mainnet launch, which is supposed to come later this year. So that will be another 20% that it's, is locked until the end of this year, or if there's a delay then uh, until next year. So about 40%, this community development token fund and the secondary distribution uh, launch incentives are coming to the uh, supply. So currently they have, what, 17.7 billion zero. So about 23 billion is still coming out of these ones. And we can take a look at community development token, what it is used for. So one of their AMAs, they said here that CRO community funds will be used uh, for all of the competitions and all of the giveaways. So their plan, on, according to EMA, AMA was to go local this year with uh, the uh, crypto.com. So as you have seen, they now have a Telegram group for almost every country or continent. So they have a Telegram group for Aussies, they have a Telegram group for uh, Nordic countries, for Brazil and for other countries as well. France, they have their own Telegram and they have these giveaways inside those Telegrams and inside Twitter as well. And all of this is paid from these tokens. So crypto.com doesn't have to pay anything for them because it's coming from the supply, which is just coming to their wallet. Uh, so that's interesting. And the secondary dis distribution and launch incentive fund, uh, according to their white paper, this is the release schedule. So during the first year, they will receive 10% of this fund. And the second year, 8% will come out and then 6%, 4%, 2%. So the inflation from this fund is going lower and lower and lower. So during the first five years, they can use this for the early adopters. So if we take a look at this actually, so to total supply of CRO is steadily going up and uh, the current supply is close to uh, 18 billion like I showed before 
So you can see here it's 17.7 billion. And uh, they get this money on their address. CRO is another ERC20 token for now before the mainnet is launched. So you can go to this address and see that every single day, you can see that every single day, they are getting about 21.9 million CRO added to their wallet. And this is free money again that they get on their wallet according to their white paper. And I think it's a, well, well, some people say this is a bad thing. This is like a fraud and this is a Ponzi scheme. But I think it's brilliant marketing because now they have secured their own uh, funds for the next five years from this one. So they can do anything with they want with that money. And uh, you can see, well, I already showed shown you this, but if you actually take a look on the third page here, what they are using these funds, you can see that 48 days ago, they transferred a lot of money in 200,000 CRO increments to this wallet. And if we take a look at what this wallet is, according to Etherscan, you can see that this wallet is actually Huobi. So they are selling CRO to exchanges. And another I found was OKX 20, 48 days ago. And you can also see that OKX received funds uh, 253 days ago as well. So they are selling CRO to exchanges, which is massively profitable because they haven't had to pay anything for this CRO. It's just coming to their wallet and they can sell it to exchanges whenever they want or need. And they can give it to uh, early adopters like myself with the CRO staking and the syndicate rewards as well. So now you know that they are getting a lot of free money. And if the total supply for CRO is uh, 100 billion CRO, and there's only 17 billion here currently, there's still 80 billion that is coming to their wallets. So the total market cap for CRO currently for the circulating supply is more than 2 billion now. So the total value is more than 10 billion that they currently hold. Uh, so the, they, they, they still hold a lot of money. So people who think that CRO is not profitable, you are wrong. So according to the white paper, they get this money and they get sell it, they can give it out, they can do whatever they want with that money. So they are massively profitable from token sales alone. And they still have these different areas. And I believe these different areas are not making money. Maybe exchange is making money, but the other ones are probably unprofitable. And But token sales are so profitable that they, they, they're getting basically billions of dollars for free because they get them from the, uh, from the total supply on their account. So this is so profitable that these other ones, they can just invest as much money and the incentives can be ridiculous for as long as they want because this one is so profitable alone. But let's just take a look at the app and uh, the uh, business structure for these, what it is now and what it can be as well. So the app, you can buy and sell cryptos and gift cards on the app. And there's no fees when you buy and sell cryptos. But uh, I think they profit from the spread because the price on the app is not exactly a one-to-one -one ratio when you would go to an exchange. So I think whenever you buy and sell crypto on the app, they will get like a institution discounts whenever they buy it back from another exchange. So they make a little bit money from the spread that you buy and sell on the app. So that's how I think they make money there. And also on the app, uh, their idea is to send a portion of the orders to their exchange, uh, but they want to increase the amount of the orders on their own exchange to make it more profitable as well. And they want to have their exchange to have more liquidity and they want to bring retail traffic and institutional traffic on their uh, exchange and on the app as well. So you could see everything on the app. And they want to allow you to buy Bitcoin or other cryptos with recurring purchases as well in the future. So that means if you go to Coinbase, you can buy, set to buy Bitcoin, let's say every day, $5 or every week, $5 or $5 every month or whatever amount you want. So you can do like a dollar cost average strategy. So they want to do that as well on the app, which will be massively uh, uh, profitable as well. And then they have the card. And I think this card is the only one 
that is massively unprofitable, but it is used for the customer acquisition for their system as well. But they have some fees on the card currently, uh, which is the replacement card, account closure, and card upgrade. So these cost a little bit of money. But I, I think they lose a lot of money on the card ecosystem, but there's also the upside. So these, whenever you use a Visa or a card on a, uh, on a shop or a merchant or online shop, there's a processing fee that the merchant has to pay. So if you pay, give a merchant like $100, they will only get $98 and 2% will go to Visa. And some of that money is shared with the issuers of the cards. So crypto.com actually gets a little bit money from Visa from these processing fees. But they give a cash back 2, 3, 4, 5%. So I think this is massively unprofitable. But what they can do is whenever you have funds on their ecosystem, they can use those funds to uh, get the loans or they can use that money as leverage for their other loans as well because they hold that asset as a collateral as well. So it, it is not like whenever you have a big company, there's these different gimmicks that you can do with your company to um, play around with your holdings or your assets. So giving out loans to institutions or to retail people is massively profitable. So whenever you hold funds on the crypto.com ecosystem, they can use that funds, use those funds for other things as well. And we'll get more into this when we go to the crypto earner section and do the terms and service as well. And the exchange, we know that exchanges are massively profitable because of the fees, as well as uh, they get the market price for whatever purchase they make because they own the exchange as well. So they have retail and institutional traders on the exchange and margin trading is coming up in the exchange as well. It's uh, The plan is to come, to come this year. And when they have margin trading, whenever you have funds on the earn plans, so if you put Bitcoin on the earn plan, they can use that money to allow leverage trading with high liquidity. So they will have basically borrow your earned funds on the margin trade or for the margin traders so currently the earned funds are not making money on margin trading but in the future they can make money from the funds that you have on the on the earn section for the people who want to use leverage on the market margin trading so this one will be massively massively profitable as we know and when they combine it with the earned then they will have the uh what is, what did they call it? not the syn synchronicity the uh, collaboration with these two different platforms so they, they support each other then they have the syndicates here and people are like how can they give out 50 percent discounts for bitcoin or engine or ada or other coins and they, they think that they are the crypto.com has to pay for that money which is not true at all because i think syndicates are not unprofitable at all i don't think so and the reason is if you take a look at engine the listing event, it is a listing event. So the coin is listed on their exchange. So they give out a bit uh, discount. But whenever you list a coin on an exchange, there's something called listing fee. So the project actually has to pay the exchange to have their coin listed on the exchange most of the time. And I believe that's the case with crypto.com as well. They just decide to not take the money for themselves but to distribute it to the uh, customers as well and to drive the price of zero up because as we noticed before they have an incentive to drive the price of zero up right because the higher the price of zero is they will get the free airdrops for zero so they can use the zero for these uh, giveaways and all this stuff so they have an incentive to drive the price of zero up and they can do it through the syndicate so if the syndicate allocation is 500 million, but they get billions of dollars worth of zero on their accounts, this is just like a tiny, tiny drop, even if they had to pay something for this listing event. And they do all these listing events with collaboration with the project owners as well. So I think the project owners are highly involved and they want the 
uh, listing event to be a success as well so they can drive the price of the their coin up as well and for, for the listing fees Jared Tate who is the founder of Digibyte actually claimed that Binance won the $300,000 as DGB when they listed DGB on their exchange that's why Binance took so much time to list the uh, token on their exchange of course Binance uh, claimed that this never happened but uh, as a public announcement you can see that there is a listing fee whenever a coin is listed on Binance because they now say that from now on since 2018 every listing event will be the funds will be added to their uh, foundation which is a ch charity foundation and of course we could debate how uh, charities actually work and how charities can actually make money for the founders of the charity uh, so there's a lot of loopholes in this one but I will not go into that in this video but charities typically are not really that charitable <laughs> they are typically also making money for the people who are holding these charities as well but anyway there is a listing fee and I believe that's the case with crypto.com as well so I believe this is massively profitable and not unprofitable at all for crypto.com they can drive the price up and also uh, they will not pay retail price for this event or they get the, a lot of the coins for free as well and uh, next the borrow and lend plat platform so the crypto earn and the crypto crypto credit uh, the crypto earn they can use that money to lend money to retail uh, uh, retail investors they can lend the money to institutions and they can trade your money also according to their terms and service and crypto credit is quite self-explanatory when you uh, take out a loan you have to pay interest to crypto.com so these things work together and the earn can be used for mar margin trading in the future as well and if you take a look at the terms and conditions you can see here that you whenever you accept the terms you understand and agree that during the earn term crypto.com may hold or convert the principal into any other cryptocurrency for their investment purposes which may include making of loans so from here you know that the, uh, your money is used for to make more money so whenever they pay out like 8% uh, for stable coins or 12% for sta stable coins or 6.5% for Bitcoin they will be using that money for their investment purposes as well and you always have to accept these terms and services also crypto earn is not protected by any insurance so they have an insurance worth of 360 million for customer funds on their platform but crypto earn is not uh, in that insurance according to their terms and service at least and then uh, you have to use wallet app and crypto earn at your own risk so they basically uh, say that whatever you have on the platform is not our fault of course if they lose the money then somebody will sue them and they will probably lose but this is just according to their terms and service so they will use your customer funds for uh, investment pur purposes and then they have the merchant service and this is a big and growing market as well and uh, what is what it means is that you can they merchants can implement accepting crypto payments with crypto.com ecosystem so Traveler, WooCommerce and Ledger is already using this and also I think Unstoppable Domains is also using this so when you go to their website you can pay with CRO or Bitcoin or Ethereum uh, with their service and it's for the merchants uh, you can read the terms and services but it's quite lucrative and it's quite uh, good for them as well and uh, just yesterday or the day before they announced that uh, crypto.com pay checkout is now avail available for open chart merchants which allows over 900,000 open, open cart online shops to use and accept crypto payments so this is uh, massively bullish for CRO as well and uh, it doesn't mean they have to implement it but they can and they have an incentive that whenever a shop implements crypto payments it is free for the first six months and they can accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, I think Litecoin was there as well, and Zero, and some other coins as well. So this is coming up, and uh, this is massively bullish as well for the adoption of crypto. 
and then you can go to their AMA again. And Crypto.com Pay uh, has three things. They have the merchant service, gift card business, and the ability to send money to each other. And uh, they are planning to have another play payment platform called Magento. And this is, a, again, a big, big uh, company that allows payments online. It is an old school payment system. I've used it when I was working in an e-commerce company before. And uh, a lot of e-commerce shops actually use Magento as their uh, shop platform. And they want to use it in a way that it is automatically added to merchants. So that's a interesting, interesting thing. And uh, they already had uh, large brands with Travel, Traveler and uh, gift cards. They are expanding. They want to have gaming related brands. They also want to add it in local areas. So gaming related brands, probably PlayStation and Xbox would come to mind at first. So that's coming up and you can earn rewards in CRO. And also there will be a lot of development on crypto.com pay and it's a long-term play for them. So this is this platform, even though it sounds boring, it's going to be a big one for them. And uh, if you take a look at the uh, roadmap for the coming years, you can see that they already uh, issued these things from their most recent uh, platform. But there's margin trading, derivative trading coming up, over to counter trading coming up, these are decentralized token swaps. And then you will have something called card credit power, which basically means that you can get leverage, uh, leveraged credit with your card in the future. And then there's DeFi borrowing and lending on the uh, non-custodial wallet. Uh, Latin America is coming up, large merchants on the crypto.com pay, chain mainnet, and uh, the crypto.com further advancements advancements as well. And now, is the company already in green? And they say their plan is to have a profitable year in 2020, and they are on track. And I don't doubt them, just based on what's happening with CRO. But they see, say here that they see a lot of opportunity to invest in areas they want to invest. And uh, they are growing double digits every month, and they to, ten, intend to invest aggressively for their, uh, for their future. But they want to have the flexibility to switch profitability on and off. And I don't doubt them based on what's happening with CRO that they cannot do it. And uh, let's, uh, there's one more here or a few more slides. The ecosystem, the crypto.com pay, they say it's one of their key products for 2021. So that's important. So you could use CRO for more and more places and get the cashbacks as well. And the payment system is their acquisition channel. So the card and the crypto.com pay is their customer acquisition channel. But trading is currently where most money is made. So the exchange is the biggest money maker for crypto.com. As well as this will be replaced by lending. So lending service will be a bigger market, they think, in 2021 and 2022. So all in all, they are involved in all these different aspects. And some of these are unprofitable now, but they are making all of this together into a profitable ecosystem in the future. And I myself believe in their ecosystem. That's why I'm invested in both CRO and MCO. And if you want to get started with this, you can actually uh, uh, install their app with Google Play or App Store, click add referral code, type this code in and you will see this pop up. And uh, after you've seen that the uh, code has been activated and when you stake 50 MCO or more and get the Ruby red card or higher tier card, you will instantly get $50 back whenever you uh, use this code and stake the 50 MCO or more. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, if you like this video, I would appreciate if you can put a comment down in the comment section, like this video, and if you want me to do more deep dive research into other crypto projects and uh, other passive income making opportunities, subscribe to this channel for more as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.